one way for us to decide whether to reject the null hypothesis is to determine if the probability of obtaining the standardized test statistic, those are those z-scores or t-scores or chi-squared values, we are going to decide if the probability of getting that value is less than the level of significance. So um, remember that we always assume that h sub 0 is true. So if h sub 0 is true, true, then a p-value, which we're going to learn more about in section 2, if h sub 0 is true the way that we assume, then a p-value or probability value is another way to think about it, of a hypothesis test. So what a p-value is, um, if h sub 0 is true, then a p-value of a hypothesis test is the probability that the sample statistic sample statistic would be what you got for your sample or more, whoops, what you got or more extreme. So then if the probability that we would get the 47 miles per gallon, if the probability of that is less than or equal to our level of significance, so the probability of us obtaining that 47 miles per gallon was like 0.13%. If our level of significance is 0 .5, 0 0.05, which is 5%, then our probability of 0 0.0013 is smaller than that, then we would have to reject the null hypothesis. So if P, which was the probability that the sample statistic is what we got or more extreme. If that's less than or equal to alpha, which is our level of significance, then we would reject H sub zero. But if P is greater than alpha, we do not reject H sub zero. Now the value for that P value, we are going to we're going to learn how to find in the next section. But it depends on the nature of the test. So the p-value of a hypothesis test depends on the nature of the test. Okay, so what I mean by that, so remember that there were only three types of hypothesis sets that we could have. So we could have that h sub 0 is that mu equals a number and h sub a is that mu does not equal a number. Well, when we get that situation, then um, what we see happening is that we have our standardized test statistic here and we have our standardized test statistic here, that's the negative version, standardized test statistic. In the middle is C, which is kind of our level of confidence. And then these areas out here are the ones we're trying to avoid. These are the ones that would make us reject H sub zero. So remember that we found these areas um, by doing one minus C divided by two. Well, the area of each of these sections is one half p. And this is what we call a two tailed test. Mainly because it has two tails. If our null hypothesis is that the mean is less than or equal to some number, and our alternative hypothesis 
is that the mean is greater than some number, then what our section, what our uh, normal curve would look like would be that we'd have some standardized test statistic that we're testing with, with our number here. And what we want is for that to be, we're assuming that it's less than or equal to that number. So this is the part we're trying to avoid, the alternative hypothesis. And this area is just equal to P. And this is called a right-tailed test. Then the third option was that H sub zero is that mu is greater than or equal to K, H sub A mu less than K. And in that case, we are going to have some standardized test statistic over here that's negative. We're trying to say that our mean is greater than or equal to some number, so this is our not area. And the area, the value of that area is equal to P. And this is called a left-tailed test. So remember the P value is the probability that our sample to statistic would be what we got or more extreme. So in this case, the P value is the probability that our sample ended up at this value or further to the right. In this one, it's the probability that our sample ended at this value or further to the left. And in these, it's the probability that our sample ended either bigger than this value or smaller than that value. So we're gonna practice telling which kind of test we have by doing examples on page 360 again. So we're going to page 360 and we are going to do, as soon as I turn to that page, number 37, 38, and 40. What we're supposed to do is state H sub zero and H sub A. We're not gonna state them in words, we're just gonna state them in symbols. Then we're gonna determine whether it's a left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. So number 37. A security expert claims that at least 14% of all homeowners have a home security alarm. So in symbols, that's the letter P, at least means greater than or equal to, 0.14. That's the claim. So when we go to write H sub 0 and H sub A, H sub 0 always has to have the equal, so it's going to be the P is greater than or equal to 0.14, and that's actually the claim, so we want to label that. And then H sub A would be P is less than 0.14. So if you refer back to the notes we just took, when the claim is greater than or equal to, that's this guy, then that is going to be a left-tailed test. Thirty-eight. A manufacturer of grandfather clocks claims that the mean time its clocks lose is no more than point zero two. So that's mean is mu. No more than means that it could be equal to 0 0.02 or it could be lower than that. Since the null hypothesis has to have the equal to in it, the claim of mu is less than or equal to 0 0.02 is the null hypothesis. And then H sub A would be mu is greater than 0.02. Back to our notes, we see that when we have mu is less than or equal to for the null hypothesis and h sub a is greater than, we have a right-tailed test. Number 40. 
A report claims that 87% of lung cancer deaths are due to tobacco use. So that's a P. And it's not saying more than or fewer than, so it's an equal to. So our null hypothesis would be P equals 0.87, which is the claim in the study. And then our alternative hypothesis would be P is not equal to 0.87. So we look back on the previous notes. When we have an equal to, not equal to, we have a two-tailed test. So kind of what I'm noticing here is that if you look at the alternative hypothesis, it's telling you which tailed test you have. So if it's less than, we have a left. If it's greater than, we have a right. And then if it's not equal to, we have a two-tailed test. Now, we just had talked about how to know whether to reject H sub zero and whether to not reject H sub zero. Um, but there's specific ways that we answer the questions when we decide to reject or not reject. And these are the only ways you can reject them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a table and you should really put this on your cheat sheet because um, for all hypothesis testing, it's going to be phrased in this manner or something that's really super similar to this manner. You can't get very creative with um, writing your answers to these. So remember that we only had uh, two options. One was to reject H sub zero. The other was do not reject H sub zero. So out of those two options, we're going to have a different response if H sub zero is the claim or if H sub A is the claim. You're going to have to write these little paragraphy sentency things for like every problem that we do with hypothesis testing, you'll get really tired of it, probably the first time you do it, but you still have to write it. So, if H sub zero is the claim and we reject H sub zero, then the way that we phrase that answer is, we say there is enough evidence to reject the claim that, and then we write the sentence that goes with the problem. So there is enough evidence to reject the claim that the average gas mileage of a specific type of car is 50 miles per gallon. If H sub zero is the claim and we do not reject it, then really all we do is change one word. We say there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that blah, 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 blah. And you might see them phrased slightly differently, but not much. If H sub A is our claim and we reject H sub zero, then what we say is there is enough evidence to, so not, we, now we're not reject, we're rejecting H sub zero, but H sub A is the claim. So we say there is enough evidence to support the claim that blah 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 and then again if we do not reject H sub zero we just change this by one word and we say there is not enough evidence to support the claim that blah 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 so 
So when your claim is H sub zero, you're either rejecting or not rejecting the claim. When your claim is H sub A, you're either supporting the claim or not supporting the claim. So let's look at some examples then. We're going to look at 43 through 52. Gosh, we're not going to do all of those. Let's see, we'll do 43 and 45. on page 361. We have lots of steps to do here. So what we're going to do is determine whether the claim represents the null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis and then um, if we reject the null hypothesis, what do we say? If we do not reject, what do we say? So, a scientist claims that the mean incubation period, which is mu, for swan eggs is less than 40. So, mu is less than 40 is what is being claimed. Since H sub 0 always has to be an equal to, H sub 0 is going to be mu is greater than or equal to 40 and h sub a will be mu is less than 40, which is the claim. So in part a, we're supposed to say if we reject h sub zero. So if we reject h sub zero, let's go back to our little table. If we reject h sub zero, and my claim is h sub a, then I have to say this sentence right here. So I would say there is enough evidence to support the scientist's claim that then we just go to our problem and say the mean incubation period for swan eggs is less than 40 days. That gets really, really wordy, but it sounds kind of fancy when you're done. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay, so we go back to our little table. We do not reject h sub 0. h sub a is still our claim, so now we're in this box. There is not enough evidence to support the claim that. And I'm not going to write all of that out. I'm just going to go dot, dot, dot. Because we just wrote it up here. But it would be, if I only had one answer, I would write out that sentence. There is not enough evidence to support the scientist's claim that the mean incubation period for swan eggs is less than 40 days. Let's look at a different setup. How about 45? A researcher claims that the standard deviation of the life of a certain type of lawnmower is at most 2.8 years. So standard deviation is sigma. At most means that it's either that big or smaller, so less than or equal to. So our null hypothesis would be sigma is less than or equal to 2.8, and that's the claim. And our alternative hypothesis would be sigma is greater than 2.8. So if we run through our whole test and we end up rejecting h sub 0, then we'd need to go back to our table. 
H sub 0 is our claim, and we rejected H sub 0. So this is the sentence we're working with. There is enough evidence to reject the claim that. So I would say there is enough evidence to reject the claim, I guess the researcher's claim, that the standard deviation for the life expectancy Oh, I guess they didn't use the word expectancy. Oh, darn it, that was extra. For the life of a certain type of lawnmower is at most 2.8 years. Phew. In B, if we do not reject H sub 0, so again, back to our little table. If we do not reject H sub 0 and our claim was H sub 0, H sub 0 is the claim we do not reject, then we say there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that blah, blah, blah. So there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that um, there's not enough evidence to reject the researcher's claim that the standard deviation for the life of a certain type of lawnmower is at most 2.8 years. So let's look at um, the steps for hypothesis testing. In general, and we'll become very familiar with these as the chapters wear on because we will do more and more and more of these guys. So, step one, steps for hypothesis testing. Step one, state the claim mathematically. And you also want to identify the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Make sure you label which one is the claim. Specify the level of significance, which is alpha. Determine the sampling distribution, the standardized sampling distribution. sketch and shade its graph or calculate the test statistic remember that comes from the sample and its corresponding standardized test statistic so the z-score, the t-score, or the chi-square. If we're doing p-value testing, we're going to find the p-value. And we use the decision rule that if p is less than or equal to alpha, we reject h sub 0. 
if P is greater than alpha, do not reject H sub 0. And then last, we're going to write a statement in context of the original claim. And that's where you really can't be creative. You're really using that box up there that we wrote a little bit ago. In section two, we get to start actually doing these problems.